Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. That time of week again, NFL Power Rankings. We are heading into week 15. You might be wondering, why am I wearing a Blue Jays jersey? But if you're a fan of this channel, you know that mostly baseball is the end-all, be-all on the channel. In the offseason, we do talk football. Football is big number two on the channel. But with the Blue Jays missing out on Shohei Otani this past week, I just thought I would mourn a little bit and wear Jay's jersey. Otherwise, guys, we're going to jump into it. We're going to go over all 32 teams heading into week 15 here. Talk a little bit about each team, how their week went last week, who they're playing this week. And guys, this was a this is getting harder and harder because really like the middling and even the bottom, it's so clustered. Like the NFL is so good this year. Any team can seem to beat any team on any given week but one thing is for certain at least right now the Carolina Panthers are back in the bottom only putting up six points this past week against the New Orleans Saints division that while is very weak I thought maybe they'd start to be able to compete had to put them back in the number number six or number 32 after that six point performance the offense young looks a little lost out there sure he doesn't have a lot of weapons but will he be able to carry this team on his back we see other rookies making progress, but he just does not seem to do it. I feel like Carolina is in for a long-term rebuild, so that kind of sets them into number 31, or in 32. Number 31, moving up one spot after, I guess it's an upset, but is it really against the Pittsburgh Steelers? Steelers looking pretty atrocious this past week, losing to the Patriots. Bill Belichick, the era over for them. Just wild to see that go down this week. I was a little bit surprised that happened. They win. They go up one spot. But realistically, even though they have three wins this season, they are atrocious. They're looking for a quarterback in this draft. No doubt about it. Number 30. I'm not going to say too much about these next two teams because they were both on the bye. We got Washington kind of staying in the same spot. I think they dropped based on almost the whole rest of the bottom row one this week. And we'll get to that. But... Washington just dropped because I think matching up against the rest of the rows, the teams ahead of them, they're going to lose. Same with this next team, the Cardinals. Both these guys on the bye, Washington and the Cardinals. I don't like, even though the Cardinals have looked all right since Murray came back, don't like it. I don't like the way they are as a team as a whole. I feel like the other teams at least are making progress, whereas maybe the Cardinals, there's a lot of question marks, so I'm going to be pretty excited how they play this week. They're playing San Francisco, so I don't really expect to learn a whole lot about Arizona this week. I do expect them to get bullied, whereas Washington, they're playing the Rams. So both these teams, I kind of expect to have really tough weeks coming off the bye. Number 28, we got the New York Giants coming up with a massive win this Monday night primetime. Looking incredible. Tommy DeVito, the story of the night. His agent looking like Mafia. His family looking a little crazy. Last week, I got called out. I called Tommy. I said he's a tro he does not match up in this division. He doesn't match up in this bottom row. But Tommy, so far, has shown that he is a winning quarterback. They are going up against the New Orleans Saints this week. And honestly, I think they have a good shot based on what we've seen. The defense has been pretty strong. Barkley maxed, matched up with Tommy. Potentially a good chance for the Giants to get out of this bottom row if they continue to be consistent. Let's not forget the Giants were a playoff team last year. Their offense just looked absolutely terrible for most of the season. And that's kind of why they're in this position. But if they win the next couple, we're going to see them start moving on up the board because it's starting to get a little tight. Number 27, Chicago, 28-13 to 13 against the Detroit Lions, one of the biggest upsets of the week. Just Pretty great. If we saw, if we look back to when they played Detroit a couple of weeks ago, they had that lead going for most of it, but they blew it. And this time they managed to hold on. Chicago is a pretty exciting team to watch. Fields at any moment can really take this team on his back. They're playing Cleveland this week. They're pretty much only in a position where they can play upset, but they're a team that on any given night, I think they can compete with almost anyone on this board. So I don't think, even though they're there in the bottom row, we're talking smidgens of differences here. And any win streak, anything that gets me a little bit excited can see these teams moving up the board. Next team up, we got the New York Jets and all of these teams. We're just keep, like, we got a winner. We got two winners. We got another winner. The Jets just absolutely destroying Houston. 
Um, what was it? 30 to six. So the defense obviously coming up very, very big. They managed to get Houston. Houston's looking a little concerned. We'll talk about them more in depth later. But the Jets, we saw possibly some progression of Zach Wilson. Very well, considering that, that him and Aaron Rodgers seem to have a pretty great relationship. We could see a, a very nice duo, and Zach Wilson could slot very well into this backup role, allow him some time. Because one thing we see with these young quarterbacks is sometimes they get pushed in too quickly and they just can't get there. But then we see other quarterbacks like Rodgers, who have a few more years to develop, manage to get it done. Interesting win. Zach Wilson playing possibly his game of the year. Um, but the defense, of course, shutting down Houston was a big deal. Next up, Tennessee. And guys, I could argue that this team could be a little bit higher. There, but their first half in the Monday night game, atrocious. And then we see Miami blow this 14-point lead down the stretch, five minutes left in the game, and they managed to make an amazing miracle comeback. Tennessee Titans with a big win, big upset, and uh, got to have a little bit of excitement there, right? The spread was 14 points, and they managed to win the game, so caught most of the people snoozing, myself included. But Titans, I don't know if they have what it takes to keep it going. Let's see them put together some more consistency. They're having an Division matchup against a banged-up Houston team. We'll see how they play this upcoming week. Number 24, probably could argue these guys should be lower, lower, but I think they've managed to beat a couple of these teams pretty immensely on the bottom board here. I think Patriots they beat. Giants they definitely smashed. So have them a little bit ahead here. Big concern, obviously, because their offense was absolutely the worst of the worst this week. They lose a game, an NFL game, three to nothing. The only lower score where there's a winner would have been two to nothing, but we, we get there and somehow they lost. What was it? They're in a dome too, because they're playing Minnesota. So just crazy that this is what it came down to. Minnesota could have, I guess, made it six nothing, but punted at the end. But Vegas, they're playing Thursday night. They're playing the down bad Chargers, who are number 23. On this board and both these teams have had a struggling of a year I think mo most surprising out of the two is gonna be the Chargers they had a big loss this past week too against Denver 7 to 24 24 7 so their offense is bad so we're gonna have a Thursday night game between two terrible teams this week who's gonna win it's tough to say number 22 just a couple of spots up. Winning three to nothing doesn't really get you much leeway on terms of this board. And with all the teams ahead of them fighting for playoff spot, Minnesota technically is in that hunt. They managed to win, and they have a big game this week against another potential playoff team in the Cincinnati Bengals. Dobbs got this team electric for a little while, but it's starting to show why he has not been able to be consistently on a team for very long. So number 22, Minnesota Vikings have some work to do. Number 21, New Orleans Saints. I know the Saints did beat the Vikings, or the Vikings beat the Saints earlier in the, in the year, but based on what we've seen the past couple of weeks, do you think the Saints are a better team at this point? Of course, I forgot to mention that the Vikings lost Jefferson. He came back for that game, and then he went down again, so he did not finish that game. The Saints, on the other hand, took care of business against a down bad Carolina Panthers team, picking up a much-needed win in a division that is somehow still up for grabs. They probably have to run the table to have any shot of it. And they're playing the Giants this week, a team that's below them on the board, a team that if you ever are going to be back in that playoff conversation, you definitely have to beat. Number 20, a team that is in the playoff conversation, but really for how much longer? The, the Steelers losing this past weekend, Patriots on the Thursday, they have extra time to rest here, but without Pickett, this team is just completely and utterly has no chance. Uh, I didn't actually research to see if he's going to be back this week or not. I figure he's not based on the Steelers guys I've been talking to. And if he's not, they're not going to win uh, maybe the rest of the season, potentially. They have Indianapolis this week. Both these teams are 7-6, and six, I think is their record. Pretty much a playoff game at this point. If we're talking about two teams going in different directions, Steelers need to win. Indy really needs to win. It's going to be a playoff game. For sure. Number 19, we talked about it going into last week, how important their game against Tampa Bay was. And they just found every which way to not win, in my opinion. They gave it away, the turnovers, they're just not scoring. And I think the difference really came down to Ritter. 
no question about it. Uh, number 18, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? So these guys were still, I think they're in the exact same positions as they were last week. I had predicted Tampa Bay to have the slight edge. Watching the game and after the comments in the comments saying, watch out for Atlanta defense, they're right. Atlanta's defense definitely kept them way in this game on Tampa Bay. But their offense, on the other hand, did not get it done. And one thing I will say about Baker Mayfield is he is clutch. Two minutes left in the game. I wouldn't mind having the ball in Baker Mayfield's hand, and it showed on this game where they drove down to win the game. Whereas on the other hand, two minutes, do you need Ritter to run the field? I'd be a little worried, and that pretty much is making up the difference. They have the same record right now, so when the next four games are what's going to be the most important when it comes down to these two teams. Realistically, one of these teams is making the playoffs. Who is it going to be? Number 17, touched on them briefly. We got the Indianapolis Colts. 34 to 14, they lose to the Cincinnati Bengals in a spot where they were a slight, slight favorite, but uh, they just got pretty much destroyed, and the Cincinnati offense just ran all over the Indy defense. A lot of concern there, but uh, the Colts, at least, at the very least, have some potential to get back in this. Playing Pittsburgh this week, Pittsburgh is on their way to being down and out. It's like a stumbling guy just getting ready to be KO'd. Gardner Minshew is that guy who could put Pittsburgh out to pasture for the year. Number 16, moving down a few spots on the board. We have the Seattle Seahawks, 28-16. to 16, They lose to the San Francisco 49ers. Not really a surprise, but at the same time, they did not look super good. We saw a lot come in there. At quarterback, Geno Smith was out this past week. Don't know if he'll be back for this week. They do have a little bit of extra time because they are playing Monday night against the Eagles. Two teams that are kind of in a desperate need for a win, um, but they're the reigning NFC champions. So Seahawks are in a lot of trouble. We have another team in that division who is surging in the Rams, and we'll talk about them shortly. Number 15, moving on a couple of spots, 34 to 14 over Indy. And they're playing Minnesota this week. So a team that I had really moved down the board pretty quickly as soon as Burrow got hurt, they've managed to find their, find their footing. They beat Jacksonville last week. And then this week they have that massive win again against Indy. So against two teams that could be playoff teams, the Bengals are finding wins. And now they're playing a Minnesota team who's been struggling the past couple of weeks and doesn't really have a lot of offense. Joe Mixon had a massive game. We forget that it doesn't matter. If you have a good running back, some good weapons at wide receiver, the Bengals are going to be able to get some passes in. And their defense has been pretty consistent. So I do like them this week against Minnesota. And we might start talking about them being back in the playoff Conversation number 14, maybe giving the, these guys a little bit too credit after that showing on Monday night against the Giants, but everyone has a chance to do a little stumble. This is a playoff game, in my opinion, this week for them. They are playing Tampa Bay, and these two teams, similar records, but the one thing advantage in Tampa Bay is, is their division, whereas Green Bay is trying to catch up to Detroit. Probably not going to happen at this point. I do like the, the offense of Green Bay a little bit more, but uh, I might be eating my words. And with a loss here, would be loss to Tampa, loss to Giants. We would see Green Bay start to fall back into the pack that is out of the playoff hunt. Number 13, I've probably jumped the gun, but it gets a little hard when we start getting here because the records are so similar and some of these teams lose to bad teams. Some of these teams upset great teams. And now we got Houston, a team that's been fairly inconsistent. I do move them down the board quite a few spots. A lot of that has to do with A, going up against a good defense in the Jets. They did not look good. And of course, they do lose. I think Collins went down again. So now they're at, without their top two wide receivers and going into a big playoff battle. That is going to hurt. Pretty bad. They play Tennessee this week, a team that we just saw prime time, pumped up. They're going to have their, their fight cut out for them. And if they lose, this is kind of in the area now where like 10 through 20 is very, very tight, very playoff fighting oriented. So it's going to be pretty interesting how it plays out the rest of the way. Next up, we've got the LA Rams. Even though they had a loss 37 to 31 against Baltimore, I loved how they played. Their offense seems to have it going. Stafford's back, Cup's back. We can't really rely too much on the numbers for the Rams early in the season because, of course, they didn't have Cup. And then when Cup came back, they didn't have Stafford. So this team is a well-rounded team, a well-coached team. I do really expect them to sneak into that wild card type of way in the playoffs. So I do have them as number 12. 
Big chance to get a big win this week against Washington. But I liked how they played against Baltimore. Next up, Cleveland. Every time I think about dropping this team, they come up and they seem to beat the top teams in the league. They just continue to win. And this week was no different. 31-27 to against Jacksonville. Guys, they got out to pretty big lead. Jacksonville managed to get it, I guess, somewhat close. But they never really got it within a threat. Uh, two scores down most of the way. Cleveland's defense. Gave up a few down the stretch there, but they were pretty solid, especially in that first half. Somehow, Joe Flacco in the offense put up 31 points. And if they can continue to do that, they have a game against the Bears this week. I do expect them to win that one. They're going to continue to be a threat in this AFC North. Next up, I have Jacksonville, but I can't do that, right? Jacksonville must have got shuffled backwards. We'll talk about Jacksonville now. They're actually number 11 because I got to move Cleveland up. I had one spot. They won. Got to give them credit there, right? Jacksonville, a little bit of struggling lately. They do have another big test this week in Baltimore, so it's not going to get much easier for Jacksonville. We do have to think that Jacksonville had a pretty easy schedule for a majority of the season and kind of inflated their numbers a little bit. Might have inflated them up the board a bit, but they've come back down to earth now with back-to-back -back losses against that AFC North. AFC North is showing that maybe, just maybe, they are the best division in the AFC. Next up, Buffalo Bills, massive, massive, massive win. I can't say it again against Kansas City Chiefs. They had the advantage of a bye. They had that late penalty call that went in their way, of course. We all saw Mahomes crying. Maybe we'll talk about that. But the Bills come out with a massive win. It doesn't stop for them. They have to keep winning. They keep having a really tough schedule, too. It doesn't slow down whatsoever as they have the Dallas Cowboys next. And, yeah, they got to keep rolling. Number eight. I feel really dirty putting this team at number eight. I, I'm not going to lie. Because they don't beat any teams that are winning. And then they lose the way they did to Tennessee this past week. But on paper and in games and offensively, they are a juggernaut. Why they can't seem to close out games, why they can't seem to beat big teams, I'm not quite sure. And if it continues, and this week they – is not a real test because they have the Jets, but if they lose to the Jets, we're going to see them dropping way down. I'll, I'll be out of it for the Dolphins, but I'm going to give them another week. Want to see them play. They do have a tough schedule down the stretch. We're going to see them play the Ravens. We're going to see them play the Bills again, and we do see them play the Cowboys. If they can win a couple of those games, I will be more secure in number eight because right now it might be the loosest number eight I've ever seen, but that just goes to show how hard this area of the board is because number seven, I can't believe this is the team at number seven. I got the Denver Broncos and I couldn't put them any lower. I know Miami put up 70 against them, but that feels like an entire year ago, an entire team ago for the Denver Broncos. They have won what? Seven and one in their last eight, something like that. They are probably the hottest team in the NFL right now. They continue to beat really good teams. Mind you, they lost to Houston last week. But this week, they had a big, massive division win, 24-7. Their defense is not the defense we saw that give up 70 points. They've beaten the Bills. They've beaten the Chiefs. They've beaten all these other teams that show, in my opinion, they are a playoff caliber team. And right now, if I had to pick a team to bet on on this board, I would pick the Broncos. So that's why I do have them number seven. I know it's... it's Feels crazy, but also this team at number six, it also feels a little crazy. And these two teams play each other. Denver versus Detroit this week coming up. Detroit, has, they've stumbled, and we can't forget how much they've stumbled over the past few weeks. And maybe they don't deserve to be up here. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Who? This is kind of the hardest part. Six through eight were my hardest part to do. I kind of just had to lean with where I'm going, had to go with my gut. You could argue, in my opinion, that the Rams could be number six. But, anyways, back to Detroit. They coming off that tough loss again against a Chicago team. I don't tend to weigh these kind of losses heavily in my rankings when it's a division. Especially when it's a team that's up so far in the division. They should be a clear favorite to win this division. I don't expect anything really to go too sour that they don't win it. So that is a big part of why they are number six, because... As a division leader, they're guaranteed to be at home for the first playoff game. So that is advantageous for sure. Number five, I'm going to say it again. Like these, this is crazy. Like 
Denver has beaten this team, right? So keep that in mind. Number five, we have the Chiefs coming off a whiny loss to the Bills. Nothing I love seeing more lately than scrolling on Instagram reels, whatever. And it's just constant of Mahomes crying because that's what he looked like this past week after that loss, complaining about a penalty that was a penalty. Let's call it what it is. And the Chiefs, they're on top, but they're not on top of the AFC anymore. And they're very likely going to have to play in that first round of the playoffs. And they're vulnerable. I say this every week. They are a vulnerable team. But mind you, they're well coached. They have a sick offense. And I do think on most days they are the best team out there. But they're just not showing it. Number four, dropping a couple of spots. We have the Philadelphia Eagles just getting blown out by their arch division rival, the Dallas Cowboys, 33-13. to We talked about it last week. They have looked a little stumbly lately, and it finally, I think, caught up with them. Although Dallas at home, super hype, really wanted that win. Both those teams exchanging wins now at home, going one and one this year. I think that's going to make a big difference. They do have a little bit of a lead in the division now, that being their, what, third loss? Might have only been their second. I can't remember. I know they lost to the Jets. I feel like they lost the week before, too. But Eagles at number four vulnerable we're talking about two teams right now that have fallen from the top two teams they were top two for the longest time and their reign of terror is over number three we got the dallas cowboys massive win i just like what i've seen this offense has been obliterating teams left and right over the past pretty much all season honestly they do have the one mark on their resume this year against the cardinals that was pretty ugly maybe there was a big letdown game they're going to be playing Buffalo this week. Playoff game for Buffalo. It's do or die for Buffalo. Will Dallas show up? Because right now the division is still up for them. So I expect them to show up. Number two has to be the Baltimore Ravens. They're the top team in the AFC. And they just didn't destroy. They, they had a great offensive showing against the LA Rams team that I'm pretty happy about. And I do expect them to continue to move up the board. But the, the Ravens looked good. And they have this upcoming week against the Jacksonville team that has been struggling. I want to see if the Ravens can just build it and kind of start to secure that first round bye because we're only going to see one bye in the AFC and I do expect it to go to the Ravens if they can just continue to play the way they are. I talked about it at when they were 7-3 and three at the 10 game mark. They were the best ever 7-3 and three team ever based on statistics. So no surprise to see them up where they are and that leads us to number one. We got the San Francisco 49ers and I expect them to pretty much stay there this week. They have taken care of their division all season long, beat Seattle this week, have Arizona in the upcoming week. They're the most well-rounded football team, I think, out there. Baltimore's right behind them and with Dallas as well. So guys in the top two, I don't think there is much of a debate. We might start getting in a debate through four, through 12, 13, 14. Really, the rest of the board could be debated all night long. So let me know what you guys think of these power rankings. Heading into week 15, we have some Saturday football, which is super exciting. Love Saturday football. It's end of college, basically. So there you have it. Let me know what you guys think. Drop a comment. We'll see you guys for that next video.